Welcome to episode 3 of Tourum TV. In this episode we head to Ibiza for the opening parties to the 2012 season and pop into the IMS conference to catch up with Wally Lopez, Paul Oakenfold and David Guetta right after his set at the stunning Dor Villa at the top of Ibiza town. Then we head back to London for the premiere of Ecstasy, the silver screen adaption of Irvin Welsh's novel, and speak with the director, the cast and some of the audience who were there for the UK debut of the film. Mark Knight is in the hot seat and tells us all about the Tourum residency at Space and his Tourum Nights Ibiza 2012 compilation that features all of the season's biggest tracks. Then it's the Space opening party with the absolute legend that is Carl Cox. Tourum Nights also opened their account on the island for 2012 and we get a chance to chat to Grandmaster Flash, Friendly Fires, Miguel Campbell and Mark Knight. So sit back, relax and enjoy Tourum TV Episode 3. To kick things off, we're in the summer paradise of Ibiza. Ibiza is the destination for serious clubbers and party people all over the world. For the past five years, it's also hosted the IMS International Music Summit, where everyone in the electronic music scene gathers to talk business and discuss the music industry's future. We spoke to our good friends Wally Lopez and Paul Oakenfold, who were at the conference. Hello and welcome to Tourum TV. We are here at the IMS conference at the Ibiza Grand. It's 2012, I'm here with the legend that is Wally Lopez. How are you doing? I'm fine, super happy to be here. Thank you for joining us, no, thanks very much for pleasure. joining us. Always my pleasure. You're a bit of a, a legend, an institute in Ibiza. Um, you're playing the famous opening party for Space yeah. on Sunday. Right. How long have you been doing that? How many times have you played the opening party? The opening is, uh, this is my fifth year. Yeah, because before I was doing for Pasha. So, but I moved to Spain fifth years ago. So I did the uh, five openings and six closing already. Okay, yeah. legendary sets as well. Yeah, and uh, now it's like, I'm really comfortable. It's my house. It's, it's, uh, I'm feeling like home in, in Ibiza and space. And the most in the car park when they're opening and closing, it's like, I'm just going there and uh, having fun and feeling the energy from the crowd, so Excellent. I really love it. Yeah. Do you spend the whole summer here? The whole summer, yeah, even part of the winter. Now I'm based between Madrid, Miami and Ibiza, but I try to be the most here in Ibiza because the, the, why, the, not? the, the, the why not? The quality <laughs> of the life here is amazing. The most during the winter, the winter is, is crazy here. So to make music and to be, you know, that's, enjoying your life, that, that's amazing. So the electronic dance music scene is seeing a massive growth, a big boost at the moment. How have you seen it evolve and change over the years on the island? Well, in the island changed a lot. For example, this year we have the, the very first festival, uh, one, two, three festival in the island. We have the IMS, so, and also now there is a lot of di uh, different places you can play really nice music. Before that was Privilege and this year, space and Pasha, but now there is Ushuaia, Bruma, Alien, mm. Sands, uh, everywhere there is a beach club and uh, other clubs like uh, that, that you can play good music. So I think change a lot and, and in the good way, for me at least. I see that the change is gonna be like it's good for us, for our business and for yeah, the, the way we see the industry. So yeah. it's, it's very positive for me. You're playing for some of our Tour of Nights events at Space on yeah. Wednesdays this year. Are you looking forward to it? A lot, a lot. You know, I'm I'm part of the family, so I did my, wow. my yeah, I did my tour room nice compilation. Uh, I did a few parties with you guys, and uh, I always love uh, the way you do the music and, uh, and the parties and the promotion. I'm a good friend of, of Mark Knight, and I love you know to be part of it. So really, really looking forward. So if you had one piece of advice for anyone visiting Ibiza for the first time, what would it be? Yeah, uh, I think try the daytime as well. <laughs> yeah, it's the, the nightlife in Ibiza is amazing, but the day life recharges you the, the energy. So I think you, you should try also to go and enjoy the daytime. See some of the islands. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's good. Re really amazing place to, to do it. So please do it. <laughs> and also go by night. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Wally. No, my pleasure. Thanks very much. Always my pleasure. Thank you very much, guys. I love you. OK, I'm here with the legend that is Paul Oakenfold for the IMS conference in Ibiza. Thanks for joining us, Paul. Yeah, how are you? I'm good, thank you, mate. You all right? Yeah, we just got here, actually. In the sun? In the sun, back on the island, so good, <laughs> good to be here. If you, if you have one tip for someone coming to Ibiza for the first time, maybe not necessarily even going clubbing, what would it be for someone? 
Uh, what would you drink recommend? Suntan lotion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, an obvious yeah. one. <laughs> you favorite so. restaurant, favorite beach? No, I think the one tip I would give is come with an open mind. This 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 island I I didn't know this but this this island back in the fifties was very much a hippie island. It, 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 it is as strange as it sounds, it's quite a spiritual place and a lot of people have come here and I think you should come here and, and have an open mind and just go with it because you know you can meet so many people from around the world here and you can end up in so many situations and meet. I, I have friends that I met on this island 20 years ago who have become great friends from, from different countries around the world that I would never in my life have met by, by not coming here and um, that's don't don't stay in your own little circle. Meet people, get involved, and and come with an open mind. You heard it here from Paul Oakenfold, insider's tip. <laughs> so when the dust has settled from the conference during the day, the nighttime brings the biggest talents in dance music into the spotlight to kick off the season with some massive parties. The IMS hosts their annual party at Dort Villa in the idyllic surroundings of Ibiza town, including the likes of Goldfish, Azarian Third, Carl Cox. Paul Oakenfold and David Guetta. We spoke to David after his set and got the lowdown on what's happening in the life of the superstar DJ and producer. Okay, here we are in Ibiza. We're at the World Heritage Site, Dort Villa, overlooking Ibiza town. I'm here with the global superstar, Mr. David Guetta. How are you doing? I'm very good. It was fun. I love to do things that are not usual like this. It's opening the IMS conference. It's your first night tonight, opening Pasha as well with the yeah. I'm Famous party. Yes. Yes. Looking tonight. forward to it? Yeah, of course. It's it's a big thing for me and you know uh Man Famous is actually the only club in the world where I go every week, you know, and uh it's the only place where I'm I'm like a real resident DJ. And I love that because more and more it's about those big shows, you know? Yeah. You can play and across the spectrum a little bit more as yeah, well. Exactly, because you know when you play a big show it's usually two hours. When I play at Pacha I can play three, four, you know, five hours and and go through lots of different styles of music and not, not necessarily my own music. Yeah. So you can really it's be taking a DJ. me back to what I was doing when I was a resident DJ. I love it. I get to try lots of new sounds um, because, of course, you know, a lot of people are going to come because they want to hear the David Guetta records. Of course, of course. But because the set is so long, I, play, I can play also lots of, you know, electronic beats that I produce. Uh, yeah. I started my label, uh, Jackback Records, that is more for like a little more underground sounds and, and you know, uh, clubby sounds and, and oh, not... You had not the record with Nicky Romero. Yeah, yeah, Metropolis we started this. Uh, very with big Metropolis. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've done, we've done good with this record and, um, and well, you know, I, I, I always refuse to choose like one side. I always love, you know, to, to be able to play the big emotional records with yeah. massive songs, but also a little, you know, darker music. And um, that's what I do when I'm at Pacha, and it's it's really wonderful. And I'm also uh, it's a big thing this summer because I'm also starting a, a, a new season in Ibiza, but at Ushuaia on of Monday. Course. So it's a big challenge, obviously, to do two parties a week, and um, and I love challenges, so I'm ready. What can we expect from you coming in the studio? Have you got any projects going on at the moment that you can oh, tell yeah. us about? Well, there's a million. Any good collaborations things. that we might? Uh, well, there's lots of different things. I'm in the moment. I've been lately. I've been producing a lot of uh, more electro beats um, for the label. And uh, other than that, on a on a more pop level, I just produced a record for Usher and Ludacris that is huge. Um, but let's say that my mind in the moment is more like okay. 10 electronic beats for one crossover record so okay, because you know cool. um, I have time to make a new album so I can really like just experiment, experiment new sounds and, and it's fun you know I love it and I don't have to think uh, you know uh, it needs to be on the radio because yeah. I do records on purpose that cannot be played on the radio so that's that's fun and you've got two events to think about as well now doing two a week so it's a lot yeah of yeah fun. but I'm I'm not really worried because you know Pacha is like my home and yeah. uh, I think it's the home of many many people 
on the island. Uh, earlier at the RMS conference, you met Niall Rogers for the first time. Interesting experience, something special no, to you? Of course, of course. It, it's unbelievable because first, you know, he was with Arthur Baker and I, I'm a, a huge fan. He was like... Two legends a, you together. Know, yeah, it, it, it's like Arthur is a guy that really kind of clicked my passion when I was a teenager, you know? And uh, using the, he was the master of the 808, you yeah. know? And, uh, and I knew him and already one day I, I met him and I was like, my God, you don't even know how much inspiration this was to me, you know? And then to see Arthur introducing me to Nile Rogers, it, it was too much, you know? Nile, cool? David Nile, Nile Rogers. Rogers. You guys know each other? With Really? Oh shit! Woo! Wow! What's up, man? That's amazing! <laughs> no, it, it's big, and and Arthur too. You know, these are two big heroes for me, and uh, we we knew each other already. But uh, yeah, you know, moments where I discovered my passion for music. David went on to have another amazing season in Ibiza at Pasha and Ushuaia. F Me I'm Famous is undoubtedly one of the busiest nights on the island, so book early when you plan to go next year. If you don't know who Niall Rogers is, he's regarded as one of the world's most iconic music producers. Niall was part of the 70s disco band Chic and went on to produce people like Sister Sledge, Diana Ross, David Bowie, Madonna, Duran Duran, Brian Ferry, Grace Jones, Depeche Mode, the list goes on. He's also about to start work with Daft Punk. What a career. Methylene dioxymethamphetamine. Eckies. Disco biscuits. Super Mario's. White doves. The club drug. The hug drug. The love drug. X. E. MDMA. 100% pure ecstasy. Back in the UK at London's Ministry of Sound for the premiere of Ecstasy, the Irvin Welsh novel that's been brought to the big screen by director Rob Hayden. It premiered at the iconic nightclub and we went down to check it out and meet the people that made it happen. I, I grew up in the club scene in Toronto and I was going to clubs when I was 13 years old, dancing to house music all night, so, you know, I threw events, I used to be a DJ and then got into doing music videos for Richie Houghton and John Digby, DJ Vadim and the Herbalizer, so it's sort of a natural proje pro progression to try and get into documentaries and feature films and um, someone had approached me about adapting the play into a film uh, but I read it and it was like it doesn't really work as a play so I had to rewrite the whole thing from scratch go back to the book and find sort of the best stories and the best characters and sort of fill in the blanks in the book it's sort of alternating chapters between Lloyd and Heather and uh, it's a lot of internalized dialogue where it all takes place in their heads and they're talking to themselves. So that doesn't really work as a film. So we really had to start from scratch and kind of understand the characters and their motivations to tell this love story kind of set against the backdrop of the Edinburgh clubbing scene. Well, there's 51 tracks in the soundtrack. So it's absolutely crucial. It's almost like another ca main character in the film to help tell the story and push the, the trajectory of the action in the film along. And, you know, to get, to get it right, we actually had to go to a nightclub, John Digby to his DJing, and shoot in the actual dance floor to get it right. Because otherwise it's just gonna look totally art artificial and staged. And then when we're contacting artists, um, you know, we didn't have much money, we're a low budget independent film, and to get a track from Mark Knight and Tiesto, I mean, epic, you know, epic. When we went out to get music for the film, I mean, you've got to remember when Trainspotting came out, it turned, I mean, it born Slippy, the, the, the track, and then and Iggy Pop, and everything, it turned all those, those tracks into anthems that, that we still listen to and we still associate with that. So when we went to get music for the movie, we mentioned that we were making an Irving Welsh film, everybody wanted to be all over it. You know, people were giving us tracks left, right and centre, and people wanted to be on it. Some people didn't want to be involved in that sort of scene or didn't want to be associated with that and they didn't so that's fair enough and that was their choice but it was very important to us and uh, because of what the movie's about and where it's set and it's specifically set about the dance culture so it was important for us to have good tracks to have that music. The film I enjoyed and uh, it made me think a lot about yeah the whole kind of 
clubbing and, and looking back at, well, me personally going through it and remembering nights being here. And um, <clears throat> Irvin Welsh, I've met on a number of occasions because my ex-girlfriend used to look after his publishing and take him around. So I met him a lot. So, I mean, I read the book ages ago, so it was nice to actually see the film of it. Now let's catch up with Mark Knight and his latest efforts in the studio, his Tool Room Nights Ibiza 2012 compilation. Tool Room Nights, we're back at Space Year 2. We're now doing Wednesdays and we've taken on a marathon 19 shows, which is great because it really affords us the opportunity to showcase the whole breadth of what we're about as a label. Everyone from Butch, to Hardwell. We're halfway through the season and it's going from strength to strength and if you're on the island on a Wednesday night you need to come and check us out. So the idea and concept behind this year's Tourum Nights Ibiza album is somewhat different to what I've done historically in the past with my Tourum Nights compilations. Uh, the previous albums I've done have been real journeys, starting deep and finishing big. And with this one, what I wanted to do is give you a snapshot, an exact representation of what you can expect to hear when you come and check out the night on a Wednesday. This one is a Sunset Terrace. Uh, I'm doing six shows on the Sunset Terrace this year, and it's a chance for me to play some deeper, cooler music. And if you check out my podcast, you know I'm into that sort of music, and that's a chance to come and hear me play that style. <laughs> So this too is all the big underground records you can expect to hear me playing on the main terrace every Wednesday night. It was a real task putting that together because there's so much great music out there and trying to cram it all on one CD is actually quite a tall order. I managed to get 18 tracks on there but there could have been 38. <laughs> Three exclusives on there. One from Adrian Hour, who's a guy I'm really supporting at the moment, um, making some fantastic techno music. There's a track on there from Armit Sendil, and there's another exclusive from Mahalis Safras. There's also music on there from myself, all my favourite artists, Nicole Muldeva, Nick Fanchuli, Chasen Chabalos. So if you're digging your underground tech house music, you need to check this album out. Hi, I'm Carl Cox and you are watching Tour Room TV. We're now at the space opening party with Carl Cox. Carl's sets have been opening the space season in Ibiza for a very long time and when you get 22,000 people through the door on a Sunday, you know the music is going to be outstanding. We got backstage and caught up with the man himself. Yes, here at Space, it went on until uh, 2 a.m. in the morning. I was only booked to play two hours, uh, 10 to 12. But as you know, in the beef herd, it's things you can do here, and that's push the envelope based on the power of the people. people if I came up at 12 o'clock, it wouldn't have been enough. But people really, really wanted to have more. There was a great vibe out there. We had to carry on, we had no choice. And for me to be able to do that, I, 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 to be in that position, I absolutely loved it. That was a party, for, for sure. It was like no other that I've done here in IB for Based on it, it's the opening, and everyone is just so happy to be here. So for me to play an extra two hours, it had to be done. Yeah, we're playing at the Dolph Villa was, was, was just epic because this is, this is a milestone, it was a landstone, you know, it's, it's basically a place which you go to visit and uh, as, a, uh, as a tourist and you kind of get to see Ibiza town and, and all its glories and here we are making a party in, 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 su in such a revered place that it was just phenomenal to see the people enjoy it but also respect it for what it was, that was a party also. Yeah, well, the, the, a lot of the projects that are happening with me, I mean, basically, I'm are, are still releasing uh, tracks from my album, All Roads Leaves on the Dance Floor, with remixes, and uh, we're looking forward to, to the next wave of all the remixes and tracks coming from the album. Um, of course, we're, we're doing a, a Revolution Recruits, uh, where we're, we're basically bringing on new DJs now, and pushing them forward uh, into, hopefully, the next 10 years here at Space, and you know, still tripping the world fantastic. I'm still doing my tours and, and parties worldwide, and, uh, and, and of course, the Global Radio is uh, turning into uh, its 500 show 
in October. So at the ADE in, in, uh, in Holland, we're going to be uh, basically doing a massive party for that. Well, for clubbers coming here for the first time in Ibiza, really, is to take your time. There's plenty going on here. There's, there, there's music for everybody. And the sun is really hot. If you really get into it, so try not to get too, too sunburnt on the first day because you'll definitely regret it. But it's a beautiful island, respect it for what it is, and basically it'll give you back so much more and it says a pleasure that you will be coming back every year for sure. I, I love it, that's what that's how I started coming in 1985 and I haven't missed a year yet. What's good? It's your boy DJ Grandmaster Flash and you're watching Tool Room TV. <laughs> Word, don't you move. Now we're at Tool Room Night's opening party. There was a stellar lineup for the first outing, and we grabbed Grandmaster Flash, Jack from Friendly Fires, Miguel Campbell, and Mark Knight. Okay, we are here with Jack Savage from the Friendly Fires. How you doing, Jack? Yeah, very good. Thanks very for good. joining us. No problem. In sunny Ibiza, it's the Tour of Nights opening party at Space tonight. You're playing for us at Space. Yeah. Um, I suppose, first of all, I'd like to say, what do you prefer doing? Do you prefer DJing or do you prefer playing as a member of a band? Um, it's kind of apples and oranges, really. You know, DJing is more, I guess, I don't know, it's kind of more improvisation and more kind of fun. I mean, not, not that playing live isn't fun, but it's more just a sort of, you know, you're, it's like, a, like putting a puzzle together or something like that. You know, you're trying to, to sort of do things on the fly and it's all, you know, things are going wrong and things are going right. I mean, I think playing live, being a drummer, you know, it's more physical. Like, I find that, you know, I've, I've really got to, you know, work on my physical condition as a drummer. Because strong I, arms. Well, yeah, <laughs> strong arms and, and kind of, you know, like all this business and shoulders. Because it's it's really it's really really exhausting. We're playing for you know hour twenty minute sets now, and it's it's pretty full on the whole way. I'm with the legend that is Grandmaster Flash. Thanks for joining us, man. What's going on, Pete? It's good, mate. It's good. Thank you very much for coming and playing for us tonight at Tourum Nights. I think it's going to be great, man. It's definitely going to be great. Now you're here. Yeah. One thing I'd like to ask: when you're when you're DJing, when you're planning your sets, do you play off the fly, or do you kind of play to the crowd? Do you have a set in mind? I think for me, what's most important is to read the crowd. I mean, because like uh, two days ago, I was in Monaco. I did the uh, Grand Prix oh, the Formula, Formula One. One after party, you know. And that crowd, you read it a certain way. Tonight, I'm in Ibiza, you know, and I'm doing this um, this, this night with you guys, with Mark Knight. Yep. I got to read the crowd. And then from here, I go home to New York. I play New York. I read the crowd differently. You know, everybody has their own musical taste. And what makes it so wonderful is that music has now become a fusion. So there's no such thing as white music, black music, pop music, rock music, or overseas music, or American music. Just hot shit is just hot shit. And I'm like, I'm loving that. You know what I mean? So have you played in Ibiza before? And do you plan to come back again this summer? What I like about Ibiza is like, there's two testing grounds for me that separate like the men from the boys. There's Las Vegas. Yeah and Ibiza, you know. These two places here, you've got the most vast mixture of people from around the world in the room at the same time. Yeah. And you have to be qualified enough to say, wait a minute, this person's from Oregon, this one's from Paris, this one from this and that and that. And you gotta be able to feel that out yeah. and please all them people equally. So like, when I come to Ibiza, besides, besides the beautiful, incredible weather, beautiful people, it just sharpens me like yeah. a toolkit. Just sharpens my tools. Like it's good to be it's good to be kept on your toes as a DJ. Absolutely, as well. you must be kept on your toes. Yeah. I mean, because it's it's constantly being pushed. The envelope is constantly being pushed. Sometimes it's this DJ, it's that DJ, it's that person, that's that it. person, or that producer. Everyone's raising their bar now, you know. That's it. And I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving it because I mean, before I'm a DJ, I'm a scientist. So whenever I hear something new coming, or whether it's something that I did, it's like okay. Here we go again, here we go again. So I'm loving it. Ibiza, this is, this is like paradise, man. Okay, so we are here at Space Ibiza. It's a Tour of Nights opening party. 
Joining us is Miguel Campbell. How are you doing, man? I'm fine, thanks. How are you, man? I'm really good, really good, really good. good. You've just played for us inside on the terrace. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely smashed it, I must say. Oh, easy, thank you. you enjoy it? Yeah, really enjoyed it. Been looking forward to playing that room for a while, you know? Um, so, yeah, I was really happy to play in there and it went down the street. Yeah, wicked, wicked, wicked. You've got quite a distinct sound that's come through at the moment. I mean, you've said that you cite sort of Daft Punk and the French house scene as yeah. big influences in your yeah, life and in your musical sound. Is there any artists that are coming through at the moment as well that you kind of, you really respect and that influences you as well? Um, yeah, I mean, really it's the peers, the people around me, you know. Um, I take great inspiration from unsigned artists and the guys that I've pretty much been making with music with for a long time on the internet and things, yeah. you know, like before anyone was really listening to my music. It was a small group of us friends and I mean we've we've always had a passion for Daft Punk you know and to us it's more of a lifestyle than anything else you know like the whole the whole fan base thing came with the way we present ourselves and we emulate the the how do you say the music that they make and the sound that they create you it's, live it yeah yeah that's it you live it and um, and it's one of these things as electronic performers we kind of we take inspiration from the way that they did things you know so here we are, we are joined by the man himself, Mr. Mark Knight. How you doing, mate? Not bad, Pete. You? Very well, very well. So, Tour of Nights launching tonight for our second year's residency at Space. It's going off in there. It's going off, and do you know what's super cool about it? I, I think it's the best lineup we've ever had in terms of musical diversity. And what's great is that Miguel Campbell played, then Grandmaster Flash played, and the appreciation for both eyes was exactly the same, which is great, you know, which is a real statement for how things are musically out here now you know mm. people are more open-minded which is super cool you know and it gives you that free range to be more creative with lineups and i think tonight's really proved that and I, i'm really looking forward to the rest of the season if uh, tonight is anything to go Definitely. by and we've also got jack savage from friendly fires to play He's up your next. plan as well yep it's going to uh, it's going to be a good night all in all really looking forward to it and i love playing on these sort of lineups because what you do is just come and do what you do well, you know, you don't have to kind of conform or think, oh, what's he going to play? Should I play something akin to that? Or you just go, do you know what, he's going to do his thing, I'm going to do my thing, and, and people just get it. And I think that's how you should DJ, and these kind of lineups give you that, afford you that opportunity to do that. So there you have it, episode three of Tour Room TV. Make sure you join us for episode four when we travel to Global Gathering and sneak into the Friendly Fires tour bus, talk to drum and bass supremo Spy, and of course get the lowdown from Tour and Records. See you then. Yeah.